Hello everyone, this is your Captain Van and welcome to this pilot episode ng Kapitan Tero wherein we're going to talk about Pilot's Watch, their history, evolution, and the importance of time sa aviation industry. Pero bago po ang lahat, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe kung mahilig po kayo sa woodworking at aviation. This might be the channel for you and kindly click that notification bell para updated po kayo weekly kung meron tayong mga bagong videos na ilalabas dito sa ating channel. So without further ado, it's time to learn about Pilot's Watch. Let's go! Let's start building. Alright, to understand the history of Pilot's Watch, we go to the days na kung saan ang gamit ng mga piloto ay pocket watch. The problem with that is uh, the pilots would have to reach on their pocket while flying the aircraft, making it very difficult and challenging. So during the years of 1904 and 1906, there was a guy named Louis Cartier who developed uh, the first wristwatch worn by a pilot. He gave it as a gift to his colleague named Rumont, and he wanted something uh, that is simple and legible that can be worn in the wrist. So Cartier was challenged by that concept and there started the first wristwatch worn by a pilot. So came the year of 1909 when Zenith came into picture. They developed a watch which has a big Arabic dial and a big crown. So doon nagumpisa yung, yung design ng big crown ng pilot's watch. Zenith was the first official pilot's watch and it was worn by a French aviator named Louis Berriot. He was the first pilot to cross the English Channel from Europe all the way to Britain. If Cartier was the first watch to be worn by a pilot series, Zenith was the first official pilot's watch. Fun fact. Moving forward to the year of 1929, Logins came into picture and they developed the pilot's watch uh, which has a second function. The pilot can sync the watch to a radio frequency making it more accurate and precise. Siguro ang pinaka prime or golden years ng pilot's watch was during the time of World War II or 1940s wherein the brands such as uh, Omega, Bior, and IWC and Breitling came into picture. So they supplied uh, different uh, military air force for the German it was the Bior, for the British it was the Omega and the Breitling and uh, here came the I IWC afterwards. I think during those years, the most significant brand who made an impact was Breitling. Uh, it was Breitling who incorporated the slide rule, which is this one. This is a navigation tool used by the pilots back then. It is used for dead reckoning, which is primarily a navigation uh, concept of pilots for you to know your exact location on an exact time, on an exact distance in relation to your map. So Breitling was able to put this on a watch and that is why Breitling watch almost looks like this one. Moving to the year of 1944, here comes the IWC or it stands for International Watch Company. It was developed by Schopenhausen uh, and for those who don't know the brand, this, they are known for their big pilot's watch. If you think of IWC, you will think of pilot's watch uh, right away. Uh, the first pilot's watch they developed were the big pilot's watch collection, wherein it has a huge face, a huge crown vessel, and during those times, they intended to be worn sa thigh ng piloto. It has a long strap and a huge face, somewhere around 55 to 60 millimeter, yung diameter ng watch. So it's quite big. Uh, the purpose of that is again para mabilis mabasa ng piloto yung time and at the same time it can easily adjust using the crown vessel. In the years of 1950s, uh, nagsimula na yung mga long haul flights, long transatlantic flights and the pilots, they needed something. They needed a watch that can tell two different time zones. So here came Rolex in the picture. It was used by Pan Am pilots and they were able to tie up with Pan Am they introduced this Rolex GMT Masters. They made it commercialized and it was the bridging gap between the professionals and the consumers. So I think the GMT Masters were the first watch to be marketed 
as a consumer's watch with a pilot's function. Now, moving on, in the years of 1957 onwards, Omega came back uh, in the aviation industry. They were able to introduce the Speedmaster lineup. The history of Speedmaster, it was intended for car racing. But during those times, it was the golden years of NASA wherein they wanted to put a man or the first man in the moon. So Omega thought that they would offer their watch, the Speedmaster, to NASA as their official watch for their astronauts. Or the first watch to go into the moon was the Speedmaster or now we call the moon watch. Do you need a pilot's watch? The answer to that is yes. If you're a pilot, yes, you need a watch, but it doesn't have to be a pilot's watch. Gone are the days wherein we need to look into our timepiece to measure time. Siguro applicable to if you are a student pilot, if you are flying an analog and mechanical aircraft, then it's a nice tool to have as a backup. But when you start working the airline, you get to fly a very advanced aircraft, wherein it's like a computer, you already have all the tools that you need to fly the aircraft. So may, basically, the timepiece that you will wear is only for telling time. Yun lang yun. Many friends ask me, ano ba ang characteristic ng good watch? So, I characterize them as two. Number one, it should be legible, easy to read, and simple. I like watches with huge dials. The purpose of that is when I look at it, I can easily tell the time. Which is, yun lang naman talaga, yung function ng watch for me. Eh? And uh, the second, it should be precise and accurate. So, depende na po sa inyo yan, whether you go for digital, mechanical, or automatic. All of them, most of the watches nowadays, they're very accurate for the digital. They have a long battery lifespan. For the automatic, you go for the Swiss or Japanese brand, they will give you almost 100% accuracy with a minor error. Uh, the brand, it really depends on your needs. In my case, uh, I like it simple. I like the classy look. Uh, that's why I like the brands such as IWZ and Omega. For me, it's not practical to buy a very expensive watch and use it as a daily pilot's watch. Bakit? Whenever you work inside the flight tech, most of it, there's a lot of switches and your watch is prone to getting scratches. So, sayang naman kung bibili ka ng watch worth 800,000 pesos and magagaskas lang. If you're a collector side and if you use it, for occasional basis and if you have the budget by all means invest in a good quality watch but for a daily use I suggest just go for the basics with a good quality and a good brand so there you have it ladies and gents I hope you were able to learn a brief history of pilots watch and the importance of that in my profession if you have comments suggestions or recommendations of a good pilots watch please feel free to write on the comment section below and uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for the continuous growth of our channel. This has been your captain, Van Ranyawa. Stay safe, mga mates, and I hope to see you in one of my future flights.